Yeah, I first want to just say thank you to uh, our fan base, the University of Missouri, our administration, everybody on this campus, um, our recruiting um, staff, our director of recruiting, our director of creatives, our director of player personnel, uh, our coaching staff, their families, their wives, their kids. Um, it takes an entire group of people aligned um, for our, our equipment staff, um, everybody in this building. It takes a, a, a group of people aligned every single day to put their best foot forward in order to recruit. And um, we have a, a bunch of selfless people who are willing to do anything to sell the University of Missouri. And I'm really appreciative of all their hard work. Uh, and this day really is about them um, putting a great product forward and welcoming a great new group of Mizzou football players to the Brotherhood. And we're very excited about what uh, transpired today. You know, we had a top 25 recruiting class for the third time in four years. That only been done two times in the previous 20 years. Um, we have 11 different signees rated four star or higher. Um, which is the first time I think that's ever happened in Mizzou football history. We signed the number one player from the state of Missouri, consensus five-star Williams Nawari. Um, he is uh, on, on several sites, uh, the number one ranked player in the country. We're very excited about him. We also signed uh, the number one player in the state of Arkansas and the 51st player uh, nationally in Courtney Crutchfield. We're also very excited about that one. We signed players from nine different states. Um, you know, we had 20 signees, nine on offense, nine on defense, and two that we classify as athletes that we'll um, put into a better position once they get on campus and the needs for what we have in the future take shape. We signed three defensive ends, one five-star, two four-star. We know in this league you have to win the line of scrimmage and look forward to uh, Williams, Elias, and Jalen Brown really being the future of D-line Zoo. Um, really felt strongly about our linebacker core um, the guys that we were able to sign there um, with Nick Rodriguez and uh, Brian Huff, both of those guys uh, are elite players. Uh, both of those guys are going to come in and be uh, able to contribute and find a role, whether that's through special teams. They both have great size and instincts, run well. Um, really uh, excited about Nick's leadership capabilities. You know, we signed two four star corners, we're graduating two. Um, elite corners at that position. We got to continue to bring depth um, and very excited about Cameron Keys and Jaron Sensabaugh. I think they'll really help us. Aiden Glover, our quarterback, uh, can't say enough positive things about him and what his development will be under Coach Moore and his offense. Wide receivers, NWO is strong. It's alive and well with Coach Peeler, with James Madison and Courtney Crutchfield, two guys that I think will come in and compete. Um, Signed four offensive linemen, including the top-rated junior college offensive tackle and Javen Richardson. All of those guys will be here in January, which I think is very exciting for our program. It gives Coach Russell an opportunity to get his hands uh, in our nutritionist Liz to get the proper nutrition into them. Coach Jones can start teaching the fundamentals and technique, give them a chance to play early. We'll have seven of those guys be mid-year enrollees, Aiden Glover, Brian Huff, uh, Talon Chandler, Ryan Yostis, Caleb Pye from Cameron Keys. And Javen Richardson will all be here. And we look forward to those guys uh, getting started and, and uh, in integrating themselves into our brotherhood. So with that, I'll open it up for any questions that y'all might have. Caleb, as you mentioned, Will, uh, I know it was a, a tough process initially to get him. Can you kind of take us through the last three or four months since, since he committed to you guys and, and what that process was like kind of fighting off other people? He's been, he's been an oak. I never once worried about it, uh, not one time. Um, had constant communication with, with Williams, with his mom and his dad. Uh, Miss Chichi was awesome. Um, you know, when we had in-home visits, everything was great. Um, and I think Williams was, when he made his commitment um, in August, I don't think he ever even kind of wavered, um, contrary to what other people might have reported on Twitter. Yeah, I think you look back on the entire season, that kind of started the mo positive momentum for our, our university, our program, our football season. 
um, obviously to get the consensus number one player in the country to choose in August prior to any success that you've had on the football field uh, was a huge momentum boost for us. And then obviously that momentum carry, continued and carried out through the season and, and uh, appreciative to him and his family um, you know, for believing in us. And he did a really good job recruiting for us uh, down the stretch right here. Um, you know, helping reaching out to guys and, and making sure they understood why he was coming here and, and the belief that he had in Coach Peoples uh, and the belief that he has in our staff. Can you like, kind of walk us through the last week of, of recruiting, especially with it, you know, with the on the AC and the Jarrett Sands the ball, which is a little deeper weight out of the home, but just what the last week has been like? Uh, I think I said in here, thank God for caffeine and private planes. I, I think there was a day last week within a uh, – uh, 48 hour period, or I guess it would be a 36 hour period. I had eight in home visits or eight uh, visits out. Not all of them were in their homes, but coffees, lunch, um, schools, um, you know, all the way from, you know, a couple in Atlanta down to see Elias to um, Fort Lauderdale, back up to, to uh, some other places that I can't speak on just yet. But, um, you know, it's been busy. It's been really busy. Um, you know, when we got announced for the Cotton Bowl that night, um, Coach Moore, myself, and Coach Looper went into uh, Kiwan's home. Uh, they made some fantastic ribs and cowboy beans. I um, mean, it was delicious. Uh, and we ate and, and had a really good conversation and just felt like family. And I thought, you know, I thought we had a really good opportunity there. Um, it was going to be us and, and two other schools. Um, one of those schools and their head coach came in that week, in, that week on Thursday and, and uh, Kiwan told us that he wasn't going to go on an official visit to that school and that he was uh, done and was going to have a decision within the week. And, and so we you know, felt pretty good about it, um, continued to recruit him really hard and, and uh, we're very, very excited to get him. He's got electric speed, great vision, tough runner, uh, just a dynamic football player with the ball in his hands. I think he sees an opportunity for us, you know, with our team, with two seniors graduating, um, you know, an opportunity to come in and earn playing time. And, and I think he will have uh, more than enough talent to do that. Um, you know, Jaron was a guy that we recruited. He came, I believe he came to the Florida game um, unofficially after he decommitted from a previous school. You know, we were recruiting him really hard. I went into Innsworth Academy the day uh, the day he went to um, his official visit to Tennessee. Um, you know, and, and knew that we were going to be in a really difficult fight there. But we had the last visit, and ultimately we were able to um, convince him that this is the best place for him. Yeah, I think momentum's key in a football game and in recruiting. And, you know, there's been a lot of positive momentum on, on social media uh, in the last 72 hours or so, maybe more than that, really, last 10 days. And I think uh, that combined with the results of the season, combined with the accolades that our team has uh, received, you know, the Cody Schraders, the All-Americans, Luther Burdens, uh, Chris Abrams Drain, um, Javon Foster, Darius Robinson, all those guys getting postseason awards, I think has really um, created positive momentum for us. A couple guys that can play various spots. Where do you see Jude James and, and Austin Denny kind of starting out? Of it? Yeah, you know, both of those conversations with those guys were, let's see where we're at in spring, what are our biggest needs, and then we will pl plug you in right there. I think, um, you know, Jude for us could play either the H position or linebacker nickel position. Um, I, we feel like he could be a four-team special teams guy as a freshman. I think he's got great athleticism. He plays safety in high school, played nickel at seven-on-seven seven camp here, and then plays like an H position. So there's a lot of flexibility for what he would be able to do for our program. And again, we want to see where our depth situation is coming out of spring. What's the, what's the quickest way for him to contribute? Uh, you know, with Austin, he has versatility at both the running back position, wide receiver position, or in the secondary at the safety position. We play with three different safeties. So, again, coming out of spring, what, where does the roster kind of settle in the next um, 14 to 21 days? Where are we at after spring practice? And then we'll plug Austin in.
very excited about his competitive nature. You know, um, him and his Courtney were um, state champions last year in basketball. You know, he's a three port, a three sport athlete uh, at Pine Bluff, and so you know he he is the definition of an athlete. When you look at and reflect on the board of playing time that you guys got today, what are some qualities that you think collectively that that group is going to bring to your team? You know, I think we, we talk a lot about. Um, our core values um, and I think these are all guys that are really competitors they all looked at Missouri as an opportunity to compete they weren't afraid of the competition they embraced the competition not only the competition of the SEC but the competition on our roster they wanted to join the brotherhood I think they had a lot of trust and respect not only in the coaching staff but the players on our team I think they're going to be willing to do more than what anybody else else expects out of them they have something to prove um, and they're great guys that we wanted to be around them and their families when they came on unofficial and official visits. We enjoyed being around each other, and, and I think that was the recipe for success in not only recruiting them, but them getting, you know, joining our, our, our family, brotherhood. Coach, you've been around football your whole life. Have you whole ever life. had this much fun um, these past few months, or even just December, even though it's been a little busy for you? Um, you know, I told the team. I don't know, it might have been middle of October. It was the most fun I'd ever had coaching football. And I really believe that. Um, it was just the right mix right now. Uh, it's, there's a lot of really good stuff going on within our program, within the players. Uh, and you don't take it for granted. I told the staff, don't take it for granted. It doesn't mean it's going to be like this forever. Um, but man, it's such a joy coaching guys like Cody Schrader and Xavier Delgado and Javon Foster and Bency Polgar. and. Marcellus Johnson and um, you know Ryan Hendershot, uh, thicker kicker, you know Chris Abram for Drain, Chad Bailey, watching Tyron Hopper's journey, Ennis Rakestraw's journey, um, Marquise Johnson. It's been really fun coaching him, seeing him uh, grow and develop as a true freshman, watching the freshman play. Uh, the interactions that we get to have with the staff, you know, it's been a really fun addition for us to add Kirby uh, into the mix. Brandon Jones on our staff, obviously, we get along really well with uh, Coach Baker and, and the rest of those guys. So it's it's just been a real pleasure so far to coach. Um, you can't take it for granted. We're obviously going to lose uh, so guys after the bowl game um, to graduation and to NFL and. We'll have to start all over. You know, each year you start over. You got to recreate um, your identity. Um, but for the next, I guess, ten days, I'm going to really enjoy being around everybody. You know, today we had practice and had a few reindeer games and played some some dodgeball out there and just had a great time. So it's been a lot of fun and and uh, you know, again, core value number four for us is enjoy the journey. You know, it's not about a destination; it's the journey that we're on and a lot of really good people on this journey right now. I think it starts first with being uniquely them. Um, you know, when, when new people come, whether it's players or coaches, we ask them to be uniquely them but join us. And who they are uh, individually is never going to supersede who we are as a team. Um, but we want everybody to have their own individual identity, you know, with that team first mindset. And I think Blake has, does a really good job with that uh, in his coaching style and relating to the players, but also demanding excellence. And I think Coach Moore's really done a lot of the same. Um, you know, low ego, high output performance. Um, there's a lot of things that he has brought from a value standpoint, from a schematic standpoint, from a game plan standpoint, while still holding on to some things that we as a staff believed in, you know, in running the football and how we designed the run game. And he didn't flinch. He didn't complain. He didn't say, no, that's not how I want to do it. He just said, okay, let's – Let's figure this out together. And, uh, you know, Blake did the same thing when he took over for Coach Wilkes. He didn't just throw away the playbook. He said, what's best for our players to learn? And I think that's, a, that's an approach that's not always taken in football you know, with coaches. And I think it served them both really well. You said a couple weeks ago you hope to have an update on the future of those guys. Is there anything you can, can share on this situation? I'd probably just stay close to social media for the next 36 hours and 48 hours and see if we don't just release something. But uh, yeah, I mean, 
things change all the time in college football, so you never know. But I feel confident that they'll both call the plays in the bowl game. Yeah, I mean, I think recruiting comes down to selling what you've done in the past and what you believe you can do in the future. And anytime you can give a, a current demonstration of what you've done in the past and how you believe that will tie into somebody's future, I think it's always a positive thing. Um, great coaches have always been associated with great players in their past. And there's a long line of great players that our coaches have been able to coach. Um, it's the same with, with the past that I've been associated with. I've been very blessed to be around great players. And, and any time that you can show a demonstration of, hey, this is where they started and this is where they're at now, I think it creates buy-in. No, I mean, not much, honestly. Um, you know, we still talk about the goal for our programs to chase two dreams, develop an elite edge, and play for championships. Um, you know, this year we were able to be a lot closer to that, and we can show a pathway of how we can compete for a college football playoff spot, which then means you're playing for a national championship. Um, again, just because we were, you know, whatever we've done this year doesn't guarantee us anything towards next year, other than we have the capabilities. Um, what we do next year, we're going to have to earn, and it'll start all over um, after the ball game. I don't know if you're allowed to speak about transfers at this point or not individually. Yeah. Um, you are. Um, yes, okay. it depends. But the ones who have announced, I don't know if they intend to sign. It all depends on if they've signed a uh, SEC agreement and a financial aid agreement. So you could ask, and I would, yeah. I would have the ability to deny or right. say I can't talk about it yet. You know, green and gold has always been one of those colors that's closely associated to me just because of where I'm from. The Alma Airedales were green and gold. So I have a lot of love for the, the color green. Um, but I'm not able to discuss anything related to a player as of right now. After adding these guys in, what's – obviously the portal's open for a lot of – just big picture, what, what's left? What are you looking at position-wise for the transition? Yeah, we still have uh, a few positions of need moving forward. Um, I'm not going to be a billboard for advertisement. I think our coaching staff knows what we're looking for. The number one thing we're looking for is the right fit for the Mizzou Brotherhood. Um, guys who are going to come in, be uniquely them, but join us. Guys who want to be a part of an elite edge program who are willing to compete on a daily basis to be the very best version of themselves. Um, if we can find one of those players who are going to add value to our roster, we will look to add them. Um, but. We're not, we're not desperate for any position right now. I feel like with this signing class that we have, um, with the additions that have uh, made commitments to us so far, um, and with the returning players that we have, I think the future of Mizzou football is very bright. Yeah, I'll give you a quick teaser on that, and then I think maybe we do a Ohio State press conference when we're down there. Yeah. Um, obviously, again, Ohio State's a very talented football team. They are a blue blood program with elite players on uh, just about every, not, not just about, in every aspect of their program. Regardless of who's left and who's there, um, Coach Day and his staff do an excellent job schematically in player development. It's going to be a very difficult contest for us. I haven't paid attention to uh, their coming and goings, other than I know that their quarterback, it, you know, has transferred out. Other than that, I've been so focused on our preparation and our recruiting that I haven't spent a ton of time uh, knowing exactly what they're going to do. I feel good about our preparation so far. It's going to be more about our ability to react and defend what they're going to try to do with a new quarterback than maybe. Um, attacking their style of play because, again, we don't know what they're going to try to do offensively. I think there's 76 plays on the season that uh, – is it 
Brown, that Brown has played quarterback number 33. I've watched all those. There, There's a variance there from play action pass, drop back pass to quarterback run. Um, they did bring him in in the red zone to do a quarterback run package, so I anticipate uh, something similar to maybe what Florida did in the fourth quarter with their quarterback. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, they're, they're one of the best defenses that we've played against all season, if not the best. Um, they've held nine opponents to 12 points or less. I think they're top five uh, in just about every major statistical category and top 10 in all statistical categories except for maybe red zone touchdowns because there's not very many people that have got into the red zone. Um, they've got elite players at the line of scrimmage. They've got elite players at linebacker and in the secondary. So we're going to have to really focus on what we do. We have to win the lines of scrimmage on both sides of the ball to even have an opportunity in this game. And so that's our mindset. How do we win in the trenches? And um, it's going to be a really difficult task. I know that. But that's what you sign up for when you play in the Cotton Bowl. Um, I don't believe that one of those two is signed. So what I would actually let's let's just um, we'll have a we'll do another press conference for transfers maybe um, whenever that's a little bit more finalized. But we're excited about some of them. <laughs> we're good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.